Good evening, distinguished guests, professors, associate professors, doctors, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today at this symposium. I'm Dr. Nisu Kai, project manager from ESI. I will be the master of ceremony for today. On behalf of ESI, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to this Hepatology Epic Symposium. Now, our symposium is going to proceed according to the following agendas. Agenda 1, Welcome speech by Professor Joe Sutton. Agenda 2, Introductory speech by Professor Wen Wen Sui. Agenda 3, Today's topic by Professor Wen Nai. Agenda 4, Academy lectures from our responsible speakers. Agenda 5, to end the session, agenda six, closing remarks, and agenda seven, dinner time. As the first program is the opening ceremony, I would like to invite respectfully Professor Joe Soton, Honorary Professor, Defense Service Medical Academy, President of GI and Liver Foundation, Myanmar, to deliver the welcome speech. Hello. Good evening, everybody. So it's a wonderful day. And thanks for attending, uh, despite your busy schedules uh, this Saturday evening. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate Professor Woman Sui, head of, president of Hepatology Section, Myanmar GN Liver Society, for organizing such a, a wonderful event with, with a room full of attendees with overflow. Thank you. Another thing, uh, thank you, Lanvima, for your kind support for this uh, important section. This is the first time I have been here. I have ใช่คือมาอยู่ใช่วิ่งเอาเนอะมันเลยอันนี้ตัวกูจะกันลาบีโร่นะจันโอรุพอไปแม่ตัวตันนัทชนอ่ะครับสัตว์ตันนัทช
ဒီတော်ပစ်တွေလည်းရွေးချယ်ထားတာပါဒီမှာဆိုလို့ရှိရင်တော့ကျွန်တော်တို့ရင်တဲ့ဒီအင်ပါစန်တက်တက်လူတ
liver disease, clinical perspectives of alcoholic liver disease. So as you know, the alcoholic liver disease are very interesting topics and, and it is alcoholic fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, as well as alcoholic cirrhosis, and then alcohol-related many problems causing a uh, health burden for our country. So Professor Nainenton will deliberately, completely review the alcoholic problems and alcoholic liver disease. So this session will be presented by Professor Tanda Tong. So she will be presenting the role of liver transplantation in the management of hepatocellular carcinoma. So hepatocellular carcinoma is the problems in our hepatology. It is gradually increasing related to hepatitis B and hepatitis C. There are so many treatment of the hepatocellular carcinoma, but the main curative treatment is liver transplantation. So, Professor Tanaton will be discussing about the role of liver transplantation and the management of hepatocellular carcinoma. So, she was talking about the good effect and side effect of liver transplantation, especially for the hepatocellular carcinoma. The fourth topic is medical treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma. It will be presented by Dr. Mei Aung Shan. He is recently promoted as a head of the Department of Hepatology and Gastroenterology in the Defense Service Medical Academy. So Professor Mei Aung Shan has a lot of experience in management of the hepatocellular carcinoma, especially for medical management. So there are a lot of changes and then up training management of hepatocellular carcinoma by so many regimes. So he will be discussing about the recent guidelines and the recent management of medical treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma. So the last, last presentation, but not the least, it is new nomenclature of the fatty liver. You all know we have a changes in the nomenclature of the fatty liver, non alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now we have changes MESLD instead of NFLD. Metabolic dysfunction associated steer to hepatitis. Metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease. So there are so many changes in the nomenclature of the non alcoholic fatty liver disease. So our professor and Dr. Arnold Bois will present the impact of implication of these changes in nomenclature in the management of non alcoholic fatty liver disease. So final session is Q&A session. Actually, a Q&A session will be uh, shortened or as limited time in view of the length of the presentation. So I would like to request all the presenters to be completed in a limited time to get a, a longer duration in the Q&A session. The final event is closing remark 
it will be given by the Professor Kim Owen. And then we will finish our section with the dinner. So first of all, I would like to call upon Professor Wen Wen Sui to present current status of elimination of the chronic hepatitis B and C. Professor Wen Sui is head of the department of Yangon Specialty Hospital. She has many experience in development of the hepatitis B and C guidelines. And then she will be presenting very interesting topic as well as final, uh, final guidelines and then uh, final events and effort, efforts by our government to eliminate chronic hepatitis C and B. Professor Wimsey, please. And good, good evening. Today, I will talk about the uh, current status of elimination of hepatitis B and C. Introduction. According to the ratio global progress reported in 2021, 295.9 million, about 3.8% of people were living with chronic hepatitis B viral infection and 57.8 million, about 0.8% people were living with chronic hepatitis C viral infection. This show the viral hepatitis B and C in the world. Uh, a total 325 million globally. Viral hepatitis is uh, responsible for estimated 1 by 4 million deaths by year from acute infection and hepatitis related liver cancer and cirrhosis comparable to HIV and TB. So, estimating uh, global number of deaths due to the viral hepatitis is increasing uh, from the 2,000 uh, 2, years to the up to 2,015 uh, years. Uh, this shows the, the uh, increasing in number of hepatitis B and C infection worldwide. With the estimating an accelerated response, the number of people living with hepatitis B virus is projected to remain at the current high level of for the next 40 to 50 years. A uh, step up global response can no longer be delayed. Global health set a strategy. Uh, in 2016, World Health Assembly has adopted the Global Health Set Strategy, GSS, on viral hepatitis to eliminate hepatitis by 2030. This shows the uh, disease elimination and eradication definition and requirements. According to the elimination, this means reduction to zero or a very low defined target rate of new cases in a defined geographical area as a result of deliberate efforts. Uh, control measures are needed to prevent re establishment of transmission. Uh, eradication means a complete and permanent worldwide reduction to zero uh, new patients uh, of the disease through the deliberate efforts. Control measures are no longer needed. 
Uh, this is the global of the ratio GSS to a gradual hepatitis instant from 6 to 10 million cases to 0 0.9 million cases and to reduce the annual hepatitis death from the 1.4 million to 0 0.5 million by 2030. A global version and uh, a war well, parahepatitis transmission is healthy and everyone living with parahepatitis has access to safe, affordable, and effective prevention, care, and treatment services. Goal is uh, elimination, eliminate the viral hepatitis as a major public health threat by 2030. Uh, targets for reducing the new cases and death from the chronic viral hepatitis B and C uh, from the 2015 uh, new cases, new infection uh, from the uh, uh, higher level to reduction and about the two at the 2020 30% reduction to the 90% reduction of new case infection during from the 10% uh, reduction to less than 0 0.5% reduction of tail uh, by the 2030. One organization, JSS documents show the five areas in which efforts are required to eliminate hepatitis by 2030. Uh, Co-target areas, number one is uh, hepatitis B viral vaccination, number two, prevention of mother to child transmission of the hepatitis B, and three, injection and blood safety, four, harm reduction, and five, test and treatment of hepatitis B and hepatitis C infection. Uh, target area, uh, hepatitis B viral vaccination, child vaccine coverage, that of coverage uh, based on about 82% in infant to 90 to 90% uh, at the 2000, by the 2030 targets. Uh, prevention of B viral from the mother to child transmission, B viral by dose vaccination coverage or other approach to prevent mother to child transmission, in which uh, baseline thirty eight percent from the baseline thirty eight percent to uh, uh, fifty percent by two thousand twenty targets and ninety percent as a two thousand thirty targets. For the blood safety, thirty nine countries do not routine test of all blood donation for transmission transmissible infection. Uh, and also 89% of the donate donation screening in a quality assurance manner. Uh, as a uh, 2020 target, 95% donation screen in a quality assure manner. And as a 2030 target, 100% donation are screened in quality assurance manner. A safe uh, interesting and uh, target area, percentage of the interesting administered with the safety engineer device devices in and out of the health facilities, in which uh, uh, five percent from the five percent to up to fifty percent and then ninety percent uh, by the year two thousand thirty. For hem reduction, number of sterile needles and syringe provided per person who injected drugs by year uh, from the 20, uh, 20 number uh, by the 2015 to 200 and then 300 uh, as a target year of 2030. Uh, for the hepatitis B and C diagnosis, less than 5% chronic hepatitis B infection diagnosis from the 2015 to 30% to now, uh, targeted to uh, 90% by 230 years. Uh, for the viral hepatitis B and C treatment, uh, from the less than 1% treatment to the uh, 2020 targets as uh, 5 million people will be receiving hepatitis B virus treatment and also 3 million people have receiving uh, hepatitis C viral treatment. And as a target of uh, eighty percent eligible person with chronic B infection and eighty percent eligible person with chronic hepatitis C viral infection treated by the year two thousand thirty. So current status of hepatitis B and C elimination, uh, in which uh, coverage of uh hepatitis B blood dose vaccination, uh, latest data as a eighty seven percent infant had received the three doses of hepatitis virus in the first year of their life. 
for the mother of child transmission, uh, B is prevented by the timely administration of the B birth dose vaccine within 24 hours of birth, in which uh, latest data, 46% of the infants will administer the birth dose of B vaccine in a timely manner. For the blood and uh, internet safety, uh, in 2015, 39 countries were not routinely screening or blood donation for transmission transmitted infection, and and 89% uh, of the donation underwent a quality control check. Prevalence of BNC are very high in people with uh, who inject drugs, be with. Uh, and so, uh, in 2015, only 20 storage syringes were provided to par period per year and targets to provide 300 syringes per period per year. Uh, for the hepatitis B and C current treatment, uh, to, uh, current treatment rates are very low up to now. And uh, as according to the Global Hepatitis Report 2017, 1.7 million B and 1.1 million C patients were treated in the year of 2015. Uh, 2016, uh, 1.76 million additional C patients received treatment and accumulated 2015 and 2016 C treatment number reached to 3 million. Uh, to eliminate hepatitis, the goal is to reduce yeah. 80% of BNC patients by 2030. Highly effective C drugs are available in the market, and price of the C drugs have been reduced to over 100 countries. But drug pricing is still a problem in many developed countries. There is a strong need to find a highly effective treatment for hepatitis B virus. This channel shows the progress towards the achievement for hepatitis B and C elimination in the Asian and Pacific region, result from the modeling and global reporting. Between the 2015 and 20, chronic B prevalence declined uh, from the 4.69% to the 4.3%, and C prevalence declined from 0.64 to 0.58%. The region achieved the 2020 target of 30% incident reduction of B infection, while C prevalence declined to uh, 6%. ACC is enough for B and C increased by 9% and 7% respectively. Uh, liver liberty death from the B rose by the 8% and mortality attributable to C led you. Uh, large testing and treatment gaps remain in 2019. Only 30% of chronic B infection were diagnosed and 25% treated. 29% chronic C infection were diagnosed and 11% treated. So, very happily, much became national priority with adequate funding to reach elimination goal by 2030. Progress uh, towards the C viral elimination in high income countries and uh, updated analysis. Anyways, 11 countries Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Ireland, uh, Italy, Japan, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and UK are on track to meet the ratio elimination targeted by 2030. If current level of diagnosis and treatment are maintained in high-income countries, only 24% are on track to eliminate C virus by 2030, and 60% are on uh, track by at least 20 years. So many difficulties are present at the whole world. According to the AG history, AG hepatitis elimination. Uh, chronic C viral infection in major public health problems in many countries and low country, uh, low income countries. In 2015, Egypt, uh, C infection prevalence of 7% among the adults was among the highest in the world and accounting for 7.6% of countries' mortality. So very high, and this is a, a, a very sad story of the Egypt. Uh, between 2014 and 2020, it is screened more than 50 million and treated more than 4 million residents for C infection. Uh, they have the five uh, key elements. Five key elements contributed to the Egypt uh, successful ACV elimination program. Number one is a uh, sufficient and reliable epidemiology data to uh, qu uh, quantify and monitor public health threats. Number two, a, two, uh, a robust public health care 
infrastructure. Number three, inclusive care that reach all sectors of society. Number four, increase healthcare spending. And number five, innovative scientific research and use of the information technology. This is a very important uh, five key elements to elimination of the hepatitis C viral infection. According to the original data, the low coverage of BNC testing and treatment is seen in the, all the racial regions. Almost 90% of the estimated global burden of the undiagnosed and untreated uh, hepatitis B infection population live in the racial region, Western Pacific region, 36% and 38%, African region, 30% 28%, South Asia region, 22% and 20, 21% respectively. This shows the cascade of diagnosis and treatment of the uh, patient uh, hepatitis B cascade. Uh, for hepatitis C, largest population of the undiagnosed and uh, untreated estimated population live in the South Asia region, 26% and 23%, followed by the European region, 21% and 23%, and African region, 20% and 19%. It's also through the hepatitis C cascade diagram. For the strategic plan, achieving the 2030 for hepatitis animation targets requires a substantial increase in the capacity to test and treat people with viral hepatitis B and C infection. As already access to testing and treatment hepatitis B and C infection in the racial regions, while the burden of undiagnosed and untreated populations are the largest is an urgent priority. Integrating viral hepatitis services in HIV, antiviral therapy clinics, and antenatal care clinics, uh, which already provide prevention and treatment services for HIV and uh, STD disease, provided a simple initial step to reach people who live with HIV, high risk population group, and pregnant women. In many countries, Large population-based screening and treatment programs are urgently needed to reduce the global disparities and to ensure that no one is left behind. Uh, according to the Myanmar data, viral hepatitis burden in Myanmar. In Myanmar National Zero Prevalence Survey 2015 estimated about 3.3 million people live with the viral B and close to the 1.3 million live with the viral hepatitis C cell from go to the develop the disease. Uh, this is the, uh, according to the Myanmar data, B and C prevalence uh, and survey at 18 townships. Myanmar study for hepatitis C treatment through the public sector 2017. By the end of the 2018, uh, 6,000 people had received treatment. Our NACP, National Hepatitis Control Program Cases of Girl, from the June 2017 to January 2021, after the COVID infection, we have stopped NACP program and now restart the NACP program up to now. In which management or uh, management of the uh, C infection and also C and uh, HIV co infection. Our as survival SVR to achievement is 92.3%. Initial success from the public health approach to C testing, treatment, and gain in seven countries, the road to elimination. This is uh, another data. Uh, Cambodia, India, Indonesia, Myanmar, Nigeria, uh, and, and also Vietnam and Rwanda. This leading to the cause of stress and diagnosis to drop to as low as US dollar 80 per patient. Uh, in which more than uh, 5,900 healthcare workers were trained on hepatitis C care, over 2 million patients training, and over one, uh, one, uh, one, 120,000 initiated treatment and cure rate have been above the 90%. In Myanmar, C prevalence is 2.65%, and uh, after, um, B, uh, during the NACB program, national supply is a little short days. So we will start the PPP, a public-private partnership program in 2018, in which patients uh, uh, will uh, buy the drug with a very low price. 
and building on the initial success, scale about the PPP is a primary strategy for the Myanmar. Everyone's solution tomorrow is Syria, Nevari, and a C program, C in a Kajaro, PPP program, and tomorrow, Mia, Sikula Kajaro, Dromina, C positive, Trimanga, as we are ready, Mia, and more than ninety five percent. Shabba. My topic conclusion. Uh, summary of the key strategy and operational shift uh, required to eliminate B and C very efficient as a public health threat by 2030. Promote a greater public and potential awareness of the importance of viral hepatitis B and C prevention, testing, and treatment. Allocate the increased financial resources to viral hepatitis B and C, including viral hepatitis prevention, testing, and treatment. Skip and universal access to have B blood dose vaccine and improve services for testing of the pregnant women for preventing mother to child transmission of the hepatitis B. Ensure continuous enforcement in primary prevention, including improved safety and medical injections and procedure, hem reduction, and other evidence based measures for people who inject drugs and have B vaccination to infant and at risk populations. Substantially increase access to B and C testing to reach people living with chronic B virus and C virus infection of from more than 80% and 90% respectively are currently and diagnosed. Promote the decentralizing hepatitis B and C testing and treatment and tech sharing by non specialists and nurses. Our goal is hepatitis free for future. These are then my reference. Thank you very much for your kind intentions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Winsway, for your very interesting topic about uh, uh, elimination of the hepatitis B and C. Uh, now we will be uh, proceeding the second topic, uh, it is a uh, medical treatment of the hepatitis, hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, this topic will be presented by uh, Dr. Mian Shen. Uh, Dr. Mian Shen uh, is a uh, uh, head of the Department of Gastroenterology and Hepatology, Defense Service Medical Academy. Uh, he has a lot of uh, experience in uh, management of the hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, he got a fellowship in liver transplant and hepatology in India and he, uh, he will be uh, top, uh, presenting uh, medical management of the hepatocellular carcinoma. Very interesting topic. Please welcome Dr. Myung Shan. Good evening, uh, uh, professors and all my senior and colleagues. Uh, today, I would like to continue uh, topic medical treatment of ACC in Hepatology Update 2023. I have nothing to disclose. These are the outlines for my presentation. ACC patients have two diseases. One is ACC and another one is uh, analyzing cirrhosis of liver. It has the impaired hepatic function and it has the features of body hypertension. Increased body pressure will be an uh, obstacle in management of hepatocellular carcinoma, and ways of bleeding can be exacerbated by sun targeted therapeutics for ACC. It has the high organs rate and new addition, especially in the uh, analyzing sources of liver in ACC. This is a uh, treatment algorithm in BCSE updated 2023 22, and creative treatment can be done in ACC. It's a very early stage and early stage with the ablation therapy, recession, and liver transplantation. And in recent updated 
in the United States, with the extended liver transplant criteria, can be downstated to the uh, liver transplantation and can be done with the graded treatment. Otherwise, the advanced state ACC is, uh, can be treated with the systemic therapy as the palliative care. Uh, in advanced state ACC, first line drugs and second line drugs are IMWB. And in any lesion with the breast cell liver function, chine A or B, performance stated ECOG 1 or 2, uh, present or border invasion, plus or minus, is for a bit spread. It is the advanced state ACC. The mainstay of treatment is the systemic medical treatment with tyrosine kinase inhibitor of the immunotherapy. This is the main molecular pathways in ACC pathogenesis. Uh, through the differentiation, cell differentiation and apoptosis through the wind beta catenin pathway and the uh, cell proliferation through the rep map pathway and the uh, Cell survival pathway through the AKD and top pathway, and finally, angiogenesis and cell group and um, negative regulation of the cellular cycle. These are the so many times in kind of inhibitor uh, uh, fed to the, the group factor. This is the overview of the targeted agent approved for ACC from 2007 to the 2020. In 2007, so is the mainstay of treatment in the advanced state ACC. Its median overall survival is only 10.7 men. Now, the first line therapy is began the immunotherapy like the adizub, adizubat. It median overall survival began the 90.2 men. Surafinib and levatinib began the first line, second try agent. I would like to continue front line thiamutin kinase inhibitor therapy. This is the different mechanism between the sorafinate and levatinate. In sorafinate, uh, it's a FGF1 only and levatinate FGF1 to 4. So it has the dual therapy uh, in the angiogenesis and cell survival and group. Sorafinate began the first time therapy uh, according to the SHEP triad in 2007, and levatinate began the uh, first line therapy according to the REFET triad in 2017. In SHEP triad, uh, using the sorafinate, median overall survival is. 10.7 men, but uh, in Asia Pacific trial, uh, its overall survival is only 6.5 men. So, Asia Pacific trial is less responsible than the SHEP trial. And in SHEP trial, so often it's used in the uh, Chimbus A only. In According to the Gideon observation study, uh, using the Chimbus A, Chimbus B, Chimbus C with the Surafini therapy, that response is not better than the Chimbus A. Who does also have need is recommended treatment for ACC patients with pressure liver function who are not amenable to surgery and the original treatments or in who TAC failure. But it has so many side but uh, especially harmful skin reaction occur in most of the patients. So uh, patients cannot uh, tolerate the who does also have need. And so, so I mean, therapy response is uh, not good. This data shows that dose modification from recombinant sorafinib daily dose in ACC patient. And levatinib trial began the levatinib began the first time to going to the refresh trial. And its tumor response is uh, according to the MUC criteria, uh, tumor radiology response is better than sorafinib, and it is a lesser cyber than the sorafinib. This they will show the dose modification for recommended levatinib daily dose in ACC patient. This they will summarize the uh, conclusion of the first time modular therapy, uh, sorafinib and levatinib therapy. All patients are, are BCID state B or C, chine A, performance status 0 to 1. Median OR survival is 10.7 men in SHEP trial and 6.5 men in the HRP trial. In according to the levatinib, is the 31.6 men in the refresh trial. I would like to continue second line thiosine kinase inhibitor therapy. Uh, Rigorafinib, carbozantinib, uh, ramuzi rumet are the uh, second line therapeutic trial uh, therapeutic agent in the advanced state ACC. Uh, Rigorafinib can be used in the uh, second line agent, especially in sorafinib tolerating patient according to the research trial. According to the Kalashia trial, carbozantinib can be used as a second line therapy, especially in sorafinib non thyroidin patient. According to the RIS2 trial, Ramuzi rumet can be used as a second line agent, especially in patients with uh, a more than 400 nanograms per meal. 
I would like to continue uh, frontline front line immunotherapy in ACC. Uh, in cancer immunocycle, the immunotherapy progress with the NDCD LA4 or NDPD1 antibody in the primary phase, it activated T cell. And immunotherapy progress with the NDPD1 or NDPD L1 antibody, uh, it began the recognition of the cancer cell by T cell and killing all the cancer cell. And this year, level, anybody are MB, MBD movement and family movement and NDPD1, anybody are NIVO movement, family movement and NDPD1, NDZOD movement, DAVA movement and every movement. Immune chapter inhibitor achieved its anti immunity effect by restoring the original potential of the natural human immune system as the powerful and present weapon against cancer cells. I would like to continue combination of the immunotherapy with the Tramini Mumet uh, and DCD LA4 and Chua Lumet and DPD L1. They affect the primary phase and effect phase. According to the Himalaya trial, patients with receptive ACC and no prior system therapy, BCD state B or C disease, and chambers A equals performance data less than one uh, using the uh, combination of the immunotherapy. According to the efficacy, uh, combination of the DAVA lumet plus family movement overall survival is severe than sulfinate. So this combination immunotherapy became the potential for the first time therapy in and resulted by ACC or the uh, advanced state ACC. But update did not prove yet. Second line immunotherapy are nivolumab and combination of nivolumab plus APD movement. Uh, initially, nivolumab began the uh, potential first line drugs for the uh, uh, ACC pH treatment with the uh, immunotherapy. But uh, it, uh, phase two trial of nivolumab results are very good. But uh, phase three trial of nivolumab are, are not significant and but demonstrate the clinical benefit. So it did not meet M1 in phase three for the first line therapy. It began a second line therapy, but it now withdraw but listed in NCCN guideline. Thankfully, Zumet also uh, uh, the first line therapy in an initial phase two trial, but uh, according to the Kino 240, Zumet did not meet the uh, M1 primary M1, it began the second line therapy. Combination of the Nivoli movement and APD movement, NDPD1 and NDCLA4, it affect the, the primal phase and affect the phase. Uh, it's used as the dress for the, the thyroid cancer, uh, in the cell carcinoma uh, previously. Now it's used in the reproducible carcinoma, uh, but it did not, did not meet the first line therapy. Combination of this immunotherapy uh, was the FDA approved for the patient who have been previously treated as sulfonate as the second line therapy? I want to continue the combination of thiosine kinase inhibitor plus immunotherapy as the front line therapy. Non immunogenic whole tumor microenvironment uh, began the uh, immunogenic hot tumor microenvironment with the thiosine kinase inhibitor. Uh, immunotherapy is more affected in the immunogenic hot tumor microenvironment. So, combination of the thiosine kinase inhibitor, Vivazi Zumet, and immunotherapy, immunotherapy inhibitor, Adizoli Zumet, combination uh, testing. Going to the iron grade 150, patient with locally advanced or metastasis or and receptive ACC and Chi A uh, equal less than one using with the these. Uh, thiosine kinase and immunotherapy inhibitor as the first line therapy in advanced state. According to the result, is the median um, overall survival is significantly better than the uh, sulfonate. So uh, it began the uh, first line therapy in the advanced state ACC or the unreceptible ACC. So FDA approved as the first line therapy at May 2020 in naive patient and receptive or metastasis ACC. Uh, according to the uh, radiological immune uh, response with the MVC criteria, 
Kobi was one patcher was one, but I done that through a pinnit. But a budget and bleeding rate is more oka in the combination of these therapy than the through a pinnit. So OGD scope within six months of initiating treatment required to evaluate for phase Z. The best price is very high. Once I get for nearly 90 lap pneumatia. This table show the first time therapy uh, summarizing according to the um, I am brave 150 hemaria trial, refresh trial, and uh, chemic 459 trial. So, NCC and guideline uh, update that preferred regime is the Adizuri Sumat plus Vivazi Sumat as the first time therapy, but only in Chinese patient. Other recommended regime is Surafinit and Levadinit as the first time therapy, second choice. These are the key ongoing phase two, three trial with immunotherapy combination as for sign therapy of advanced state. These are the on pipeline. Another one is the medical treatment can be used in the early state ACC. So, Tuma Regans complicates some percent of case at five years after research and operation, but ASAD is a NCCN guideline. Uh, suggest against the routine use of adjuvant therapy for patients with ACC following successful resection of ablation. So medical treatment can be used in the inhumane state as the down surgery treatment before liver transplantation or not. A new concept is the TAC followed by immunotherapy is the down surgery therapy uh, beyond the medium criteria uh, before liver transplantation. It is so successful for the recurrence or over survival after liver transplantation. This trial showed the downside that uh, before liver transplantation in beyond beyond criteria cases, overall survival is more better than the uh, not using downside phase. And also recurrence is more organ in a uh, beyond beyond criteria, not using the downside and uh, downside that with uh, beyond beyond criteria is less recurrence than beyond beyond criteria. Another one is the combining treatment with local regional therapy or not. Regional for the combining TAC with Surafinit are the to prevent recurrence of the TAC uh, because uh, any, any, any angiogenic activity of Surafinit. Uh, these studies try to show the combination of TAC plus Surafinit are the significantly improved progressing free survival than the TAC alone. These are the ongoing steps for the combination therapy with local regional therapy. Another one is the uh, medical treatment can be used as, uh, in larger in state ACC or not. The optimal transition from local gene therapy to systemic therapy is evolving. Uh, systemic therapy is more affected in progression of the uh, extended state, uh, extended state of ACC, but uh, uh, in case of extensive PCD in the state, systemic treatment is more affected than TAC. Changing the treatment strategy for patients with DAC and suitable in administrative ACC, especially in high tumor burden. Uh, first, systemic therapy is uh, more better than the using first DAC therapy. Uh, first initial systemic therapy lead to the downside of best response, followed by DAC is better response. Because uh, kidney, according to the kidney criteria, uh, more tumor, no juice, more than seven, no juice, uh, more tumor, Diameter more than seven centimeter is poor response to TAC therapy. Uh, Kudo 2019 show initial use of dermatitis is better response than the, uh, the initial use of TAC in uh, larger in state ACC. Now, medical treatment can be used at the uh, after TAC failure. Uh, TAC refractoriness or TAC failure can be defined as the mode. More than two constituted infected responses of the TAC therapy. Uh, in Japan, we do a analysis of uh, TAC failure ACD patient. Uh, choosing to the suavinate is better than the continuous use of TAC therapy. So, uh, switching to the suavinate, the utilizing cardiac inhibitor is better than the continuous use of TAC therapy. I would like to conclude with my own message. Uh, more aware of cancer treatment. Normal cell to cancer cell can be blocked with the uh, analyzing etiology like the ergodic liver disease, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and ergodic C2 hepatitis. In case of the cancer cell state, 
Uh, we can use the uh, recession ablation therapy, liver transplantation, and TAC, and treat it with the tumor cell. In cancer cell proliferation aspect, we can stop the vascular proliferation with thiosine kinase inhibitor, sulfapidate, dabentinate, and imuchamide inhibitor. In medical treatment in advanced state, that uh, time is not less than eight, and performance state that less than two, we can use uh, sulfapidate and dabentinate, uh, but dabentinate is uh, reduce the side effect than the suafinate. Second line therapy are uh, used at the regorafinate therapy, especially in numerous bone with prior suafinate tolerability. And another one is the suafinate non tolerability case, we can use uh, carbozantinib. If the patient have the EF protein more than 40, 400, so we can use a uh, Ramuzi rumet as a second line therapy. Other second line therapy based on the non randomized trial or lagging prospective trial data are Pamprosi Zumet, combination of Nivoli, Nivolumet and ABD movement. Now, the uh, combination of Tanzanian kinase inhibitor and immunotherapy uh, at, at the bed began the first line therapy in the case of the unresetable ACC or the advanced state ACC. Uh, it overall survival began the more than 90 months. Another first option. Uh, potential for the first time therapy are uh, the combination of immutabite inhibitor, uh, Dara uh, Lumet, and family movement, but it uh, did not approve as yet. Uh, we can use the uh, medical treatment therapy in for the downstream treatment before the blood transplantation in beyond mineral criteria. TAC followed by immunotherapy can be used. And TAC plus thiosine kinase inhibitor combination can be used in the uh, logarithm. In, in the state ACC, especially in the aggressive type of uh, ACC. In the initiative, thiosine kinase inhibitor followed by TEC of the downstream of the blood response is, must be used in the high tumor burden, especially in and larger in the state ACC. Uh, we can switch to the thiosine kinase inhibitor of the TEC failure. And this is my last slide. And so I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mayon Shan. Very interesting topic and a very good presentation. We learned a lot from you. Uh, uh, he presents uh, latest guidelines, latest management, uh, as well as uh, uh, the, the treatment, uh, complete uh, uh, treatment, medical treatment for the hepatocellular carcinoma. Thank you, thank you very much. Now we, we are proceeding to that topic. Uh, this is a clinical perspective of alcoholic liver disease. Uh, that topic will be presenting uh, Professor Nainenton. Professor Nainenton is a uh, professor and head of the Department of Hepatology at University of Medicine II. Uh, he has a lot of uh, experience and uh, management of the alcoholic liver disease. So he will uh, completely uh, mention about the uh, alcohol-related liver disease and uh, the updated management. So I would like to call upon uh, Professor Nainenton to come on stage. Good evening, Chapersons, and my teachers, my senior and junior colleagues. Today, I present the clinical perspectives of the alcoholic liver disease. This slide is just to remind the change in the terminology, uh, which is suggested, which is recommended uh, by the ESL clinical practice guidelines since July 2000, 2018. So previously we used the alcoholic instead of the using alcoholic, uh, 
uh, we uh, Isel suggests choosing the alcohol use disorder. I call it liver disease, and we change to the alcohol-related liver disease. I call it cirrhosis. We should use the cirrhosis due to the alcohol-related uh -huh. liver disease. But um, interestingly, I call it hepatitis. Uh, we the easels um, not recommend to change. Continue to use the alcohol, alcoholic hepatitis. So these are the mine subheadings. So alcohol use disorders, uh, it is a chronic disease. The chitaresis include the convulsive heavy alcohol consumption combined with the inability to stop or control the, uh, drinking despite the ever social, occupational, and the health consequences. So alcohol can affect the so many disease um, for the human bodies. Uh, among the many disease, alcohol related many diseases, the uh, alcohol associated liver disease is a major, um, major disease of the um, uh, alcohol use disorder. The prevalence of the alcohol use disorder has been steadily increasing over the past decade. Especially, it is exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. This so resulting from the harmful alcohol use has been increasing at alarming rates, and particularly amongst the women and the younger adults, less than 14 years. This is the global data. So what about the epidemiology of the alcohol-related liver disease? During the COVID-19 pandemic, alcohol consumption is significantly increased in several Western countries. So it has been attributed to the social isolations. And because of these so many restrictions, the financial crisis and the alcohol consumptions as the coping mechanism. This slides represent the spectrums of the alcohol liver disease. So we can have the alcohol, alcoholic fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis with or without progressive fibrosis, cirrhosis with or without it complications, and then patients may have hepatocellular carcinoma. So to date, uh, I will mainly focus on the uh, alcoholic hepatitis because uh, there is the most severe syndrome it is characterized by the sudden onset of jaundice and clinical signs of the hepatic decompensations, along with the intense systemic inflammatory response and the high shortened mortality. So I would like to focus mainly on the alcoholic hepatitis. Alcoholic hepatitis can be present as the first manifestation of a previously clinically silenced patient and may present as the exacerbation of the pre-existing alcohol uh, events, chronic liver disease. And once a patient has alcoholic hepatitis, it can lead to the marked reduction in hepatic synthetic function, which can be sudden change, and the worsening of the portal hypertension-driven complication, and frequently trigger the acute decompensation of the chronic liver disease, which we call the ACLF. The alcoholic hepatitis typically occur acutely in patients with healthy and prolonged alcohol consumption, which is characterized by the new onset jaundice, malice, right upper, quadrant pain, and the tender hepatomegaly fever, and the typical laboratory signs of the various degree of the hepatocyte injury, and as well as the systemic inflammatory responses. There is the epidemiology of the alcoholic hepatitis, the rate of alcohol-related hospital admission, and the number of the patients with the alcohol-related liver disease awaiting or undergoing the liver transplantation. It's uh, substantially increased in the previous two decades. Severe alcoholic hepatitis is associated with high short-term mortality which is up to 50% within three months. 
these are the risk factors, high BMI, female sex, and ethnicity, Hispanic, and the genetic polymorphism. There is a very important so PMPLA3, MBO7, sorry, MBO7, and the TM6, SF2. And patients with underlying chronic hepatitis B or C infection. So there are neither uh, dose dependent cattle values for the development of the alcoholic hepatitis, nor the linear relationships between the amount of alcohol consumed and the extent of the liver damage, although and the both amount of ingested alcohol and then of the harmful uh, alcohol consumption are the most important risk factors. Increased consumption of the coffee. And then with patients, a uh, person with the genetic polymorphisms and the gene coding 17 beta hydroxysteroids, dehydrogenase 13, seems to have a protective effect from the alcoholic hepatitis development. These diagrams uh, represent the brief uh, presentation for the pathogenesis of the alcoholic hepatitis. Um, patients uh, with the heavy alcohol consumption, sorry, heavy con alcohol consumption, uh, the accumulations of the ethanol, ethanol uh, metabolites like the acetal the heart, uh, can give rise right to the hep hepatocyte injuries. And then after uh, getting the hepatocyte injuries, uh, there will be the damage associated molecular pattern tense, uh, which uh, may uh, further uh, damage uh, to the uh, hepatocytes. And then there will be the impaired synthetic and metabolic dispension, metabolic function. So on the other side, uh, we have for alto gut to liver acid. So uh, there will be the dysbiosis in the alcoholic patients, and there will be the BAM and DEMS uh, because of the uh, bacteria translocations. Um, so many BAM and DEMS in the circulations, which uh, further activate the GUFA cell, and then the GUFA cells release some cytokines uh, like the interleukin 1 beta and the DMF alpha. And then uh, they will um, stimulate the further recruitment of the other immune cells and the which well, will contribute the further damage uh, to the hepatocytes. So uh, I would like to proceed the clinical presentations of the alcoholic hepatitis. The clinical diagnosis is usually based on the medical history and the physical examinations and the laboratory tests. The AH uh, alcoholic hepatitis patients usually present with the new onset jaundice, right upper abdominal pain, malice, fatigue, and the fever, sometimes uh, associated with the fever. The uh, other symptoms include the ascites, edema, tachycardia, the loss of the types, and sometimes a patient may present with the signs of the uh, body hypertension. Patients usually report the healthy alcohol, uh, harmful alcohol consumption, uh, which continue until less than eight weeks before the onset of the changes. It is commonly reported that the alcohol consumption has been terminated days or weeks before the onset of symptoms. These are the level findings of the alcohol hepatitis. ESD ALD ratio typically more than one fight. And uh, whereas uh, ESD or ALD usually do not exceed 300 to 400 units per liter. So, bilirubin's more than 3 milligram percent. Um, usually associated with the coagulopathy, thrombocytopenia, hypoalbuminemia, hypoalbuminemia, and then increased inflammatory markers like the leukocytosis, neutrophil, elevated CRP. Sometimes uh, similar symptoms to the bacterial infections and the laboratory findings, like the neutrophil inflammations, both could be present uh, concomitantly. So sometimes uh, the uh, acute infection um, must be uh, considered as a differential diagnosis. 
and then we have to rule out, we have to rule out the early uh, rule out by uh, microbiologic uh, testing. So our patients should have a uh, imaging uh, because uh, to to rule out the other condition like the biliary obstructions, liver malignancies, and the infectious complications. So uh, we sometimes uh, we need to proceed the liver biopsy, um, not in every situations, to confirm the diagnosis of patient with uncertain clinical diagnosis, and then liver biopsy may have a prognostic value. So his typical histology features include steatosis, hepatocellular ballooning, and the mallory tanks of worries, and the neutrophil infiltrations and the chicken wire fibrosis. These diagrams are represent for the diagnosis of the uh, alcoholic hepatitis. Uh, with the uh, when we encounter the patients with the heavy alcohol consumption with the presentations of the acute liver dysfunctions, and the uh, we can use the diagnostic criteria and I interval uh, AAA. Uh, with the history of the heavy alcohol consumptions, that means uh, more than forty gram per day for female and more than sixty gram per day for the male until less than eight weeks before presentations and recent patients might have a recent onset of the changes. And the findings, uh, previously I mentioned, uh, I've mentioned the, the similar findings. And the, in this situation, we need to exclude the other cause like the viral hepatitis, jelly, and the biliary obsession, autoimmune thrombosis, and the ACC. If diagnosed, uh, there, there, there is the diagnosis incidentis, uh, we should consider the liver biopsy. The transjugular liver biopsy is uh, preferred. And during this uh, period, uh, we can give the supported therapeutic measure like the nutritional uh, support, uh, supplement, uh, nutritional management and, and the, the uh, promotions of the alcohol uh, abstain abstinence. Uh, psychological or the medicinal, and then uh, we need to consider the vitamin B complex, and uh, such as a uh, thiamine in uh, in the in case of the thiamine deficiency, where we should consider the vitamin K for the uh, coagulopathy, and uh, we should usually uh, proceed uh, the severity assessments uh, after the diagnosis uh, by using the uh, MEL score and the DF discriminant function. So the, I would like to proceed the um, non-invasive potential biomarkers, which is uh, cytokeratin 18. It is uh, more and more popular uh, to use the uh, potential, but to use as a potential biomarker. So cytokeratin 18 uh, for the diagnosis and prognosis failures, uh, this article were released in 2000, uh, 2020, and then the repeat the stronger association between serum level of the cytokeratin 18 and the amount of the hepatocyte jet and the liver disease uh, severity. And this, uh, they analyzed the data from the 173 participants in the last trial performed in the full medical centers. There is another article, a uh, very interesting article, the Caspis Cleave Keratin 18 Fragment. The, during the alcohol withdrawal, um, they predict the liver related uh, death in the patients with the alcohol liver disease. And then again, so they conclude uh, the uh, cytokeratin 18 uh, fragments. Uh, M30 is highly specific markers of the liver uh, apoptosis, both in the alcohol liver disease and the, both in the non-alcohol liver disease. So the potential biomarker cytokeratin 18 is the reliable diagnosis and prognosis non-invasive markers of the alcohol hepatitis. The other promising biomarkers include the microRNAs in the circulating extracellular cycles. So next uh, heading is the severity classifications. Siren models 
to determine the is uh, severity and then short term prognosis. A main thing is uh, um, modifying the material functions score and then model for the end stage liver disease. Epi score, Glasgow, A scores, and the Lily score. And these are the commonly used uh, scoring system. So severe alcoholic hepatitis defined as mal uh, material uh, TF score greater than or equal to 32, mal score greater than 20, and the EPI score category C and the Glasgow A score of the nine. So what about the prognosis of the alcoholic hepatitis? Overall, the alcoholic hepatitis have a poor prognosis. If patients have the mild score 11 to 20 with the moderate alcoholic hepatitis, there will be the three to 10% of the mortality within the three months and the one year mortality 20%. If patient have a severe alcoholic hepatitis, which not responding to the medical treatment like the corticosteroids, the mortality rate is very high, 30 to 40% within one month, and then six month mortality up to 70% without doing the uh, liver transplantation. So long-term prognosis of alcoholic hepatitis is a primary determined in the occurrence of the alcohol relapse. It is a very important, um, if steroid treatment is initiated in the patients with the severe age, uh, one man survivor was 84%, the, which is shown in the recent meta-analysis. So other determin uh, determinants factors for the adverse organs include the occurrence of the infection, acute kidney injury, hepatic encephalopathy, and the presence of the model organ failure. So, Managements, um, uh, the uh, management approach of the alcoholic hepatitis, uh, it is not too much change uh, within the last two to three decades, um, mainly um, focus on the alcohol, abstinence, uh, optimal nutrition, prevention of the infections and the corticosteroids and the liver transplantation. We have a survey study that shown the abstaining from the alcohol it is essential interventions that offer the long-term mortality benefit. But uh, unfortunately, the abstinence from the alcohol is only achieved in the minority of the patients, approximately one that the subsequent episodes of the alcohol hepatitis behind the alcohol relapse. It is a very high mortality up to the 60%. Therefore, the identifications of the patients with the high risk of the alcohol relapse is very important in order to provide the optimal pharmacological and psychological intervention to promote the alcohol abstinence, which is mainstays and the um, management strategy. So next strategy is the nutrition. Patients with alcoholic hepatitis usually present with malnutrition. So that is another major determinant of the mortality in the clinical situation. If patients have daily calorie intake less than 21.5 kilocalorie per kg, our body weight seems to have the worst prognosis. So we should aim the, uh, we should recommend the um, daily uh, kilocalorie about the 30 to 40 kilocalorie per kg, and uh, with the protein intake of 1.2 to 1.5 gram per kg body weight. So all patients should undergo the assessment of the, their nutrition status once uh, patients hospitalized. The sense of deficiency is uh, very common in the alcohol liver disease. And then this implementation protects against the alcohol induced liver injury and is critical for the maintaining and of the intestinal barrier functions. So the zinc supplements uh, should be given most of the patient. So next strategy is the glucocorticoid treatment. The steroid treatment is the mainstay of the alcoholic, severe alcoholic hepatitis management. The patients with the severe alcoholic hepatitis, 
that means uh, TF more than or equal to 32 or the mouse score more than 20, glucose corticoid treatments should be initiated. So bad uh, glucose corticoid treatment, um, uh, which uh, steroids uh, should be used? Uh, most of the guidelines recommend the oral prednisolone, 40 milligram per day. For patients unable to receive the oral medications, intravenous methyl prednisolone is a uh, choice of the uh, steroid. So uh, we should um, think about the optimal therapeutic window for the steroid use because uh, steroid use uh, not only uh, have the benefit, uh, but also it has a serious uh, side effect uh, for the patient. So the optimal therapeutic window is uh, very important. So international medicine cohort study, including more than 3,000 adult patients, particular steroids improve uh, that it will survive with men patients with a severe alcoholic hepatitis, particularly uh, the benefits in the subgroup of the patients with the male score between 25 and 39, that is the optimal therapeutic window. When the benefit was lost in patients with the most severe liver disease, male score higher than the 50 ones. If patients um, have the male score more than 50, it's, uh, um, there will be the, um, the there will be uh, no benefit using the corticosteroid. So before giving the steroid therapy, uh, we should find out the contraindication of the steroid. That means the uncontrolled infections of the sepsis, GI bleeding, and then severe kidney injuries. So get a value of the creatinines more than 2.5 gram per cent. So prior to the initiation of the steroid therapy, careful screening for the infection, is very important, including a side flow analysis, urine and blood culture, and the chest x ray to find out the latent TB or the um, silenced TB. It is a mandatory. It is still remain unclear whether prophylactic antibiotic administration can improve the prognosis in severe alcoholic hepatitis. So we should uh, think about the response to steroid treatment. Uh, that's why uh, we can know, uh, we can uh, make, uh, we can decide uh, whether steroid should continue or the steroid should be stopped uh, because of the uh, long term side effect. So uh, we can use the Lily score or we can consider change in the bilirubin level or the mouse score. The Lily score is the dynamic score. Uh, it is usually, um, and the incorporating the uh, data from the T1 and the course of the steroids and T4 or T7 to assess the response of the treatment. So it can determine the risk of the tech and then evaluate the subsequent need for the further steroid therapy. So these are the emergent treatment options in addition to the steroid. So uh, we can categorize uh, inflammatory cytokines, uh, antagonists, and anti oxidative strep agents, including canakinumet, uh, bet inhibitor, and cytinesis, FSA agonists, and TULA receptors inhibitions. Second category modifications of the cadaver disease, for example, fecal microbiota transplantation. Bacteriophage, now both in the uh, clostrins and the pro probiotics. So that is the uh, improving liver tissue regenerations like the GCFS and interleukin 22 fusion protein. So our, most of the these um, novel therapies are still in the research and then pipeline uh, management. So next and the last strategy is the liver transplantation for the alcoholic hepatitis. Most patients are not eligible for the liver transplantations at the majority of the regulations of the liver transplantation require alcohol abstinence for the at least six months prior to the liver transplantations. So they, uh, usually the, most of the centers uh, 
uh, decide the sobriety period, so at least a statement. However, nowadays, the several studies have shown the early liver transplantation as a rescue therapy, maybe the reasonable options with the significant survival benefits, good outcomes. So who do you shall uh, especially who did not respond to this steroid therapy? So early liver transplantation should be considered as a salvage treatment options in highly selected patients, not all patients. It is a vertical um, management approach. After all, uh, deciding the severity assessment using the MAL school and the TF school. And the, if patient have a moderate alcoholic hepatitis, we usually need uh, no specific pharmacological treatments. If patient have a severe alcoholic hepatitis, uh, we should exclude the infection previously I mentioned um, with the uh, urine or blood culture and the SID fluid analysis. So um, we proceed the diagnostic work out, um, with the abdominal imaging, usually ultrasound or the CT. So, and then so we decide to give uh, gluco, uh, glucocorticoid therapy with the brain is long 40 gram per day. And after giving the steroids, um, we can use the Lily school for the evaluation of the tumor response. If Lily score less than 0.45, uh, we should consider the continuations of the steroid therapy for the 28th day. So I, I would uh, I just want to conclude uh, my presentation. Uh, alcoholic hepatitis uh, represent the most severe manifestations of the alcoholic associated liver disease. Alcoholic hepatitis is severe life threatening disease with the limited prognosis. Severe AH is associated with the high to short term mortality, up to 50% of the treatments. Because of the improved understanding of the underlying pathogenesis and the variety of the novel therapeutic modalities are currently being investigated. Combinations of the novel affected therapies and biomarkers to identify the patients with the severe AH at an early stage, it can help to improve short and long-term outcomes. Growing evidence of the uh, confirms the benefit of the early liver transplantation in the selected patients with the severe AH who do not respond to the medical therapy. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nanitong. Very good presentation, very interesting. Uh, actually, uh, alcoholic liver disease, uh, we learn a lot from you, cytokeratin 18, microRNA, which is a reliable power markers and a uh, prognostic marker. And then uh, regarding about the management, there is uh, liver transplantation, the uh, final uh, treatment for the alcoholic liver disease, and it, 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 it's become more popular and popular again. So uh, without much ado, we are running a little bit short, a uh, little bit, uh, time is very short. So I would like to proceed next uh, presentation. Uh, this presentation is role of liver transplantation and management of hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, the topic will be presented by Professor Tanaton. Professor Tanaton is a uh, head, Professor and head of the Department of uh, Manage, uh, Liver unit, yeah, uh, she has a lot of experience in transplantation, and then she was trained in India uh, uh, for the liver transplantation. So I hope she will present uh, the liver transplantation as a treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma. So I would like to request Professor Tanaton to present your topic. Thank you.
evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for giving NGLS and give, giving me this opportunity. And thank you, CIE, for choosing this topic to me. And also a pharmaceutical company. And then thanks to everyone who deserves to be thanked. So my topic is a role of liver transplantation in the management of a uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. As you all know, as hepatocellular carcinoma is a six. Uh, six most common cancer in worldwide and third leading cause of the malignancy related uh, mortality and a male predominant and uh, two to three times more common than the women and then common and primary liver cancer. So uh, hepatitis, uh, chronic hepatitis B and chronic hepatitis C infection, alcohol and metabolic uh, steatotic liver disease are the risk factor for development of the hepatocellular carcinoma. And uh, any etiology of the um, uh, cirrhosis, it can 2% annual, annual risk of the developing uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. So uh, regarding the management of hepatocellular carcinoma, medical management also um, mentioned uh, in the previous speaker, uh, my topic is uh, liver transplantations. So uh, I will discuss a uh, hepatologist's point of view for the liver transplantation. Um, liver transplant is an optimal treatment strategy, all you all know, it is cure both not only the hepatocellular carcinoma, but also this analyzing liver disease because analyzing the uh, cirrhosis of the liver can lead to the, the de novo hepatocellular carcinoma and then so but compared with the partial um, resection of the liver, there is a the risk of the, the, the de novo ACC or disease liver still there, but uh, if uh, liver transplantation, there is a total removal of the total hepatectomy. It can ameliorate the, all the diseased liver. So uh, liver transplant is an optimal treatment st strategy to cure the hepatocellular carcinoma. So uh, liver transplantation was performed since the 1980s uh, without uh, the eligible criteria um, regardless of the tumor burden, um, they performed since the 1980s, but uh, survival and five-year survival and results are not uh, um, good and it is dismal because of the high rates of the tumor recurrence after liver transplantation. So uh, think about the staging, which... So uh, regarding the staging, uh, the experts, they choose the, the which candidate is suitable for the liver transplant. So you can see here is a TMN staging and then the CLIP score and then the Okuda staging. So uh, we use all of the, these uh, staging, but for the management of the hepatocellular carcinoma and uh, TMN staging uh, does not account the, the how much preserved the, the synthetic function of the liver and does not account the patient's physical status, how well the patients uh, can do the normal daily activity. So, but these two factors are very important and critical in management decision in the hepatocellular carcinoma. So, uh, are you familiar with the, you all familiar with the, all of the, this uh, BFCCLT staging systems? So you can see here, uh, there is a curative management of the hepatocellular carcinoma, which is the liver transplantation, resection, and the and uh, ablations. These are the curative um, management of the hepatocellular carcinoma. So, uh, in the BCLC staging system, with based on the tumor burden, how how much the how many tumor nodules, how big, and then the preserved liver functions and. Uh, these are the predict the prognosis of the uh, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma after um, liver transplant and to decide the individual treatment approach. So uh, as you all know, these are the sickest 
first, and I will discuss in the later slides. But in those patients with the hepatocellular carcinoma, they have the preserved liver function. So compared to the end stage liver diseases, they have the uh, the lower male scores. And then so patients with characteristic we need to uh, keep in mind and discuss. So uh, to decide the individual tre treatment approach. Um, we have to discuss in the multidisciplinary tumor board. So what's a multidisciplinary tumor board? There, there is a, a, a liver transplant center. They have their weekly meetings. It includes the all experts, including the, the transplant hepatologists, and then hepatobiliary surgeons, interventional radiologists, and then experts from the any various special specialities, and then they review the image. So discuss about the tumor, but the, how many tumors, how big, and is there any extent of the tumor invasion to the uh, in the vessels, and then degree of the liver dysfunction, like how preserved the the the, the synthetic functions and the patient performance as well, and discuss the treatment option for the which one is the suitable for the, the that particular patient. So uh, the conclude and the consensus are laid down the consensus based on the board based uh, consultant and then the whether the patient is suitable for surg surgery, local regional or systemic therapy. And then they finally based on the these factors and the patient uh, was a list in the trans liver transplantation. And then uh, since the patient lives in the liver transplant and the patient received the male exception. So how, which mm, criteria based on the patient select for the liver transplant? As you all know, the Milan's criteria from Italy, uh, Mazzaferro uh, is the landmark and uh, reported the landmark study in the 1996, it's a herald new Era it so internet because of the international standards criteria it's been over two decades and then if stick to the this Milan's criteria it meets a certain criteria post transplant survivors is very good outcome very promising result so these are the Milan's cri criteria so a single tumor less than five centimeter and then up to three centimeter less than three uh three tumors less than three centimeter but Keep in mind is no extra hepatic involvement and no evidence of the cross vascular invasions. So these are the Milan criteria, and but not all patients doesn't suit in the Milan within the Milan criteria. Some patients, since the diagnosis, they their tumors are tumor biology, tumor but are outside the Milan criteria. So for those patients, they assess the to assess the liver transplantation, analyze the size number of the tumors based on the mm, tumor's characteristics and then the biology. And by, based on the biology markers and peripheral tumor markers, even in pathology, they need to and discuss and then uh, draw the conclusion to which one. So what are the biomarkers? Actually, nearly half of the patient has had the hepatocellular carcinoma as a normal alpha fetal proteins level. So other biomarkers are DCP, PIFCA2, uh, liver sweat, A AFP, L3, and then the liquid biopsy. Some center, they use the inflammatory markers like NLR, neutrophil lymphocyte ratio. So these are the biomarkers and then the consideration factored in thinking of the, uh, the liver transplantation. It is also the tumor biology. So uh, previously, as mentioned, in the outside the Milan's criteria, uh, the experts said they extended the criteria that developed based on the characteristic biology and the histology. So um, the UCS of criteria is a well-known international, uh, the, mm, the well-known criteria, and then uh, total tumor volume up to seven, and then Toronto. Toronto criteria and Kyoto criteria, these are the extended criteria. But you can see here, there is a, the five-year survival is very impressive. Impressive results and promising results. So, so UCF's criteria is a, uh, the extended beyond the mean. It's a single lesion, less than 6.5 centimeter, three lesions, less than 4.5, not more than the eight centimeter with 
of the total tumor diameter, it, absence of the vascular invasion and absence of the extra hepatic spread. Um, so uh, some center, they not only the tumor markers, uh, biomarkers, they think about the tumor differentiation. Some large uh, center, they do the, the uh, the liver uh, biopsy and to differentiate uh, whether poorly differentiates or well differentiated uh, the histology and but not uh, biopsies are not included in guideline it depends on the tumor um, tumor and then the center but uh, among those the biologic parameter alpha fetoprotein is a main role in prognostic power uh, marker but no consensus uh, or standard cutoff for the alpha V2 protein for our exclusion or inclusion criteria. But very high, sky high alpha V2 protein level, more than 1,000, it's associated with uh, poor post liver transplant survival. So before transplants, uh, the alpha V2 protein need to bring down uh, to the below the 500 uh, level uh, by means of the local regional therapy. And then if the observed, and then the lack of the response after the local regional therapy and they're still high, the alpha fetal protein level is associated with the poor outcome. So this is a pre-transplant selection model. So, so you can see here is uh, uh, alpha fetal protein. Mm. So alpha fetal So alpha fetal protein is included in the pre-transplant selection models. So when we uh, recall the organ allocations, actually allocation of the, the, the organ is uh, based on the sickness first. If I have mentioned, it's based on the male sodium and male uh, sodium to rank the candidate. So uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, the patients suffering from the hepatocellular carcinoma, they have the preserved li liver function compared to the NCH, uh, the liver diseases. So their uh, waiting list is long. So in this situation, so a tumor, the, there is a chance of the tumor progression while uh, the long waiting list. So what we will do, there is a bridging therapy. It's a bridge to control the tumor growth while on the waiting list to reduce the, 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 the tumor and then to prevent the dropout. And by means of the, the local regional therapy, such as a taste, tear, ablate, and the extended beam radiation therapies, for those kind of the therapy, the, there is a, a bridge to control the tumor growth while waiting in the, uh, the liver transplant period. And then the, they have the chance to observe where the tumor behavior is well good or that there is a the poor tumor behavior and and then the, if in spite of the local regional therapy if there is a tumor progression it is a worse prognosis um for those patients. So another one is a uh, while waiting period and then uh, the patients and the growing and outside the Milan's criteria so. For those patients, they have the good biology, and then the alpha fetal protein is, is a flat, and then a very long period of the tumors and slow growing for those. But since they diagnosis that they have the outside the Milan criteria for those patients, what sh should do for for those patients downstaging? Downstaging means uh, beyond the Milan criteria, and then to, to fit into the within the Milan fight criteria, they took the treatment with the local regional therapy. And then uh, local regional therapy bring down the size of the tumor morphology within the Milan's criteria and observed for the three to six month period of the observation. So actually, if the patients bring down in the downstages within the Milan's criteria, they are within the Milan cri criteria and outside the Milan criteria, but well downstage, the post uh, liver transplant survival not that much changed. They are more or less the similar results. But need to mind is the more uh, high alpha fetal protein um, must be down well downstage to the below the five um, alpha fetal uh, below the five hundred level. 
So these are the uh, UNOS you know, downstaging criteria for the uh, the um, outside the mainland criteria. If successfully downstage, if they can be downstaged by the within the mainland criteria, they can be listed and then the, they achieve the male ex, uh, exception point. So uh, this um, slide to summarize, because uh, ACC beyond the Milan's criteria, it's a beyond the criteria ablate, and then they do get the within the Milan's criteria and observed if patient is well um, downstage and then it is candidate for the liver transplant. If not, and the, the progression of the tumor, this patient might be the dropout from the list and delisted from the uh, tumor progression. And the choice of the local regional therapy is based on the tumor size, location, and the center expertise. And you need to mind before the, the downstage, hepatologists have to think about the adequate liver reserves where the patient have or not because of the risk of the hepatic decomposition after local regional therapy. The adherence of the Milan's criteria we discussed in the, the, the tumor morphology, tumor mm, morphology by using the advanced imaging, but uh, do not always expect good to happen. There is a chance of the recurrence and uh, still there, and then the 10 to 20% still reported, especially those who has the uh, extended criteria. So another board have to, uh, the liver transplant have to discuss is an ethical board because uh, the high risk is reported in the living donor liver transplant and it's compared to the Western country and Eastern country. Eastern country, they do the living donor liver transplant and in Western country, they are disease donor liver, country, uh, liver transplant. Because of the disease donor, they have a time to wait. They have a chance to learn the tumor behavior, tumor biology, but living to on a liver transplant, they haven't much time to observe the biology and they haven't learned to the tumor recurrence because of the fast tracking. They, uh, so for those patients, high tumor recurrence rate. And so ethical dilemma need to discuss because as a donor is a healthy person, healthy person have to give a, a, a the risk of the uh, the surgery, and then there is an organ to give it the recipient. For those recipients, it's a fatal disease and the high risk of the recurrence. So that's why it this issue uh, discussed in the ethical board. So uh, how to uh, surveillance suppose uh, transplant uh, recurrence, and uh, so. The experts that they they discuss about uh, the the post transplant recurrence whether we can learn any uh, things from the ex liver explant and then discuss about the immunosuppression. Mostly, uh, the liver transplant recurrence post transplant recurrence happen in the first two to three years of the transplant. The the single to the multiples and the in terms of the immunosuppression, we prefer the mTOR inhibitor. And then the all experts that they think about the other prognostics model we can uh, use. So uh, there is a metro ticket, metro ticket for the 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 to predict the the prognosis. So metro ticket is the further the distance, the higher the price. So the the further away the three from the. The, the inclusion criteria you must pay for the higher price of the tumor recurrence and the morbidity. So uh, there is a, in the metro ticket model, they have the size of the largest nodules, the diameter, and the number of the nodules, uh, if then there is a vascular invasion or not, and then alpha fetoplosing is a, the considering factors, and then the the, by using the, this med, uh, med calculator and pr can predict the post-transplant recurrence and the five-year survival. So this is a uh, metro ticket model. And then the, how we can know the, the microvascular invasion, we can learn from the exp explant. So after the, uh, the liver transplant, and there is a histology round always uh, uh, um, weekly, and discuss in the, 
the two might explain that there is a microvascular invasion. They have to inform the attending hepatologist. So and think about the tumor surveillance. So the microvascular invasion is the higher the tumor, the higher the larger the tumor, higher the numbers, there is a high chance of the microvascular invasion. So other prognosis models are the, the moral and then the retreat. For those, uh, the prognosis models are based on the, the, uh, the tumor marker size and then the, the vascular invasion. So you can see these are models and include alpha biomarkers, including the alpha fetal protein and histologist features with the vascular invasions. So it can predict the five-year survival and chance of the tumor occurrence. So to detect the early uh, detection of the tumor recurses, the there is imaging the whether uh, CT or MRI, and then should be performed six monthly and the first two to three years because it is a high chance of the recurrence in those years. And then in some center, they recommend uh, to surveillance until the five years. So and that, uh, being a transplant so hepatologist, they have to discuss about the immunosuppression. So uh, the strategy of the uh, the post liver transplant, the, the etiology is a different from the other uh, etiology for the liver transplants and then the ACC liver transplant because the strategy is uh, to rapidly slow down their steroid and calcineurate inhibitors because uh, they contribute the tumor recurrence and then uh, because uh, they just affect on the CD25 on the, the, the prevent the apoptosis adding of the mTOR inhibitor and because the mTOR inhibitors and has an anti-proliferative properties. So then by means of the, these things is maintained and, and then they prevent the tumor recurrence. So uh, just to uh, remind that mTOR inhibitor is uh, the mammalian target of rubamycin. It's the protein kinase. It stimulates uh, the cell growth and angiogenesis. So by inhibiting the mTOR inhibitor, it uh, slows down the tumor recurrence. The commercially available is the serolimus and everolimus is weak and accessible in the Myanmar. Uh, Myanmar patients, they are using the, those uh, the mTOR inhibitors. So in... Unfortunately, if there is a recurrence of the tumor, how should we treat? It's based on the tumor board and the share will discuss and the later and then the main, whether the ablate or resection, but taste is avoided to prevent the hepatic artery thrombosis. And then the immune checkpoint inhibitors and not, uh, it increase the risk of the rejection and the graft loss. So they, they, so immune check, checkpoint inhibitors not recommended in the, post liver transplant. So la last but not the least, lifestyle for long-term follow-up. It is very important, not only for the patient's survival, quality of life is very important. So, so patient should be as active as the, the, the life um, before the disease uh, happened. So physical and mental functioning is, is a well um, supported by the counselor and the campaign and the, to prevent the depression and anxiety. So uh, you all know that, that these immunosuppression as a multiple affect the multiple different uh, organ systems. So uh, side effect of medication, they have to cope. And then the, uh, the for to uh, for the su survival patient survival as well as the graft survival they should uh, keep uh, avoid of, of the substance use for the the adolescents and the main steel is a diet and nutrition is the main steel exercise and physical activity and weight control and the employment for the reproductive age uh, sexual functions and pregnancy should be counseled pregnancy should avoid uh, the one to two years after the transplant. So uh, and from, by means of the, these things, patient and can be the, the, the better ha happy life. So uh, before conclude, this is the take home message from my topic. Uh, Abdulcellular carcinoma is, is a very common, already more and more common in the, our clinical practice. 
And uh, regarding the treatment remedies, uh, the liver transplant is an uh, optimal treatment strategies, not only the cure, the the tumor lesions, but also it can uh, remove the damage uh, and the cirrhotic liver. And um, but management of the hepatocellular cellular carcinoma, there is an individualized treatment approach is important. So attending a hepatologist and then the all expert must must be discussed based on the tumor bur burden and the and then the the liver function have to conclude the the treatment remedy, which one is uh, the best for the patients. And then we have to stick uh, to better the 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 best results to, and to want, want to the best result, we have to stick in the selection criteria, which criteria you follow. And then to, uh, uh, the after transplant, the immunosuppression is the, uh, the adherence of the immunosuppression is very important because of the, a lot of side effects, patients uh, cope, uh, and then the surveillance is also important and to prevent the ACC recurrence. So uh, liver transplantation, so by means of the, these things, uh, the graft as well as the patient's life is will be the better the happy active life. Thank you. I thank you, Professor Tanaton. Uh, very uh, actively presenting uh, the management of the hepatocellular carcinoma uh, as a treatment option. Trans liver transplantation is a treatment option, optimal treatment op option. So we learned a lot from you about uh, our metro ticket strategy and then downstaging and alpha fetoprotein level is a very important factor for the recurrences. So thank you very much. Now the time is running short. Everybody is seeing their watch. Uh, our stomachs are making signals to get food. So I'd like to request uh, the finest speaker, uh, Professor, uh, I'd like to request uh, uh, finest speaker. Uh, actually, this is uh, Professor Kim Wayne and uh, uh, Dr. Arlen Boa uh, to finish uh, in a limited uh, time scheme. So the topic is uh, the new nomenclature of fatty liver. Uh, you know, the fatty liver is a non uh, very common and popular in our country. So there is a changes in the uh, nomenclature of the uh, fatty liver diseases. So Dr. Olaiwa will present uh, clearly about the nomenclature and impact of this nomenclature upon the, our management of fatty liver disease. Dr. Olaiwa is uh, uh, trained in US. Uh, uh, he is a, a hepatologist in there. Professor Kim Owens uh, training. And then uh, uh, he got a lot of experience from our professor. So he will present the new nomenclature of fatty liver, including uh, Professor Kim Owens, uh, uh, Sandra Max. So I'd like to call upon Dr. Olaiwa to come on stage. Thank you. Thank you, Sai, for your kind introduction. Chala Jare, Sai, Sia, my Mialon, and Gua, Sia, Sia, Mialon, Minglava. It's a complete privilege for me to present this new nomenclature.
So here's a timeline for fatty liver knowledge since the 1983 with the Association of Fatty Liver in Alcohol to and 2000, 2005 with the genetic variants like PMPLE3 and hst 17 B13 mutation in fatty liver disease to 2016 in global epidemiology of nephrology with the estimated 25% in globally in 2020. So we have the association of metabolic dysfunctions and fatty liver disease. So in, in 1980, so it is a name, a name disease. And my professor uh, Ladwit from Mayo Clinic at uh, a case series of 20 patients with non cholesterol hepatitis. In biopsy, uh, look like a uh, agolic hepatitis with no history of agolic consumption. Now, do not the camera general the Tomima Janet, the Sablo, or not, but the Egoho Jamma Pita, or the Egoho history, Michi Uthra, the Pena Uthra, published all of me, and a two at the Mayo Clinic proceeding Janet Mave to publish to Kerry, or not. They may now by my general the non call association president Yoga, the Gobonga Mune, the Kama. Aloma, no by no domain to reality, non colic to hepatitis or lack and majorano. I be roger two thousand two ma AL said here, second topic, Nephel D consensus meeting low day, a majoro, the overarching time period and Nephel D mono, to a and an umbrella ma, isolated steel hepatitis, Nessu Yoda, lack and majorano, who did a general dari, don't a jarabo. I am now by my original guideline in Tolare, two thousand fourteen ma, the blue geo followed by nice easel. Uh, Italian guideline, Asia Pacific, ALCD, Chinese Society, and International, Le International Liver Transplant Society, the guideline in Twalari. Now, so our update got our ALCD American guideline at our update episode. We will know. I want to know definition here at our guideline. I'll know definition. Ma, the, the, no other causes of hepatic steatosis and little or no alcohol consumption of blood. I want to know. You know, is less than three gram per day. Mutability is less than 20 gram per day. Rajamuru, General Nephil Dima, Chime Solution, Hepatic Steatosis in terms of ultrasound evidence or perhaps the evidence, and none of the following. Echo consumption, Mishiao, Polycysin chronic liver disease, Mishiao, second etiology of hepatic steatosis, Mishiao, one of the viral hepatitis. Now, the general epidemiological reality, Maratilo Moho, one of the general epidemiology, the echo consumption, she, no hepatitis B, hepatitis C, the ultrasound or Fibrous can evidence for the fatty liver series or the two year. I don't know. The alone, the jarred time, I don't know. Habit the Nephil Dima, the risk factor of metabolic dysfunction, get a type 2 diabetics, obesity, dyslipidemia, metabolic syndrome, that is she. I don't know. She read the Nephil Dima, the current move and a general metabolic dysfunction. She read the export panel, one of 23 hepatologists from Europe, South America, North Africa, and Asia Pacific region. I see the export in the bio, you know, Nephil Dima. Nephil D definition of the suboptimal pitta, metabolic dysfunction, in the part of metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease, one of MAFL D, so we are the general Piaume, Pionyam Lava, not the general expert opinion in Twelava. I imagine a Mephil D are the two eddy singer over etching down in the Mephil D or Tone, and now Mephil D cirrhosis, so I see it. Now the question of Jure etiologies are lacane, one of the alcohol consumption will lacane, now for hepatitis, she or she in general. Concomitant method with, for example, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, or alcohol related liver disease. Not to go to alternative causes of fatty liver disease over your that to our suggestion. Be well. Now to a flu chap, so you know that you know hepatic steatosis overweight, overweight patient, so you know, the full tension in the method you know, not to go out and type two diabetics or in it, I'm afraid you know, damn door. You know, being on normal individuals, individual, so you know that at least two metabolic abnormalities she have a one or waste a conference to high blood pressure. High triglyceride, uh, low HDL cholesterol, pre diabetic, you know, and got a home insulin resistant more than or equal to 2.5 of high CRP. So, in that general, the individual, when the Kushiro Shin, the method is over the positive criteria in the don't you know? The number of the definition of the cool can be a Shinjiro Shinjiro Shin general, method DI is diagnosis or exclusion, you know, method DI or diagnosis or inclusion, but the number of method DI domain solution in general. The lonely population population, but to be in viral hepatitis to the moderate consumption of alcohol, but not that parliament is weird that don't you know? Now, not only the same, I'm telling you, a parcel, the guideline out of the method, you know, the endorsed load, you know, and I'm not by my dash out, 
publication in Dasha Twelve level, no? Mephaldi, Nephaldi, Bakwa level, no? Or impact analysis, the low down the camera. The study to Kuara to end him, data base go to let the camera, you know, Mephaldi, Nephaldi, Shida, Bama, Mukwa, or not long term organic, Bama Mukwa, Nephaldi, Nephaldi, major driven factor insulin resistance today, Mephaldi Mara, you know, alcohol consumption, but I do it the long term organ. Alcohol-related liver disease, cancer, you know, long-term organ or driven liver disease, so that we all are able to. And all the expert panel, yeah, maybe or the nephrology, yeah, maybe for the problems with the argument is still there, you know. Nomenclature may be confusing on Joe's existing effort to promote the disease awareness, you know. You know, disease awareness we are going to learn about that, you know. Now, should be PC, you know. The basic matter of the terminology of plant and lens, you know, there's a more scientific or complete understanding of disease pathogenesis. Restratification or molecular phenotype. You know? Not quite general, the change in terminology and definition will affect on both patient recruitment and endpoint assessment. But general clinical trial, ongoing trial, she did, just like my solution, the trial here, or the general, the recruitment, the not quite general, the endpoint analysis, the impact pain, and so we the three page are able to. Not quite general, patient, patient priority, but not that general, the is a global uh, patient advocacy group, or not global level institute, and if you Three priority in a dual statement told them, no, two digital three priority lower check out of the general disease education awareness for national method. You know, not quite a screening to stay simplify non invasive assessment that are screening tested with common lure, not quite a general leshy muscle edge, you know, FDA proven the drug the method you on national machine. You know, I'm on FDA proven drugs to do logic. You know, not quite a lot of the comprehensive. Multidisciplinary care approach to that low level. The master in through other name chain or not, never the method through the mama yim chu or not through login arrow, the legus of it through statement of the problem. I am a regional the July, the Chicago area area and build a consensus meeting low level. No, a lot of how much of the body by the defense society or not area city is a early daughter of the Latin American group or not. I got a patient advocacy group in the power of the American Liver Foundation. Global Liver Institute, now Liver Patient International, European Liver Patient Association, or now called as SASA, or not South Asian Society, Bala, or not. These are the representative country for this consensus meeting, or not. But among them, there are the the different region, different organization group in the southern lower part, or not. ASAD, Israel, Ali, Asia Pacific, the Middle Eastern and North African country, now called Endocrine Society and Patient Advocacy Group, Bala, or not. Another thing that we are going to do is key question to address in this meeting. You know, I know what are the issue in current nomenclature, and what is the important of steroid hepatitis to disease definitions and endpoint, and how should the alcohol? What about the role of alcohol or not? You know, I got our name chain impact in the disease awareness clinical trial regulatory approval. That the impact can be large. You know, I got our in the maybe I will share some of the the disease heterogeneity. Or that when future events in mind, the impact can in lots of people. The media and the video issue loaded. Now the media, you know, the concerns are about the low mass or the delay that comes with the defi process. Could you hear? No, but the defi process, my dear, the the expert you do in front of the now, what you do? The they are constructed using a rigorous methodology with the anonymity of voting and reporting result. No, that for the planning purpose, they don't have. No, not transparent. Should they? Now, what you do? The round and round or sabi, you know. Patient impasse and discussion in that to discuss low charge. A defi process, Carol, is another, uh, is a new or the Asian to Greek to the other view, Sabio, Tony Jarabono, or the EG, the Sumjas, the Lona Kama, the Temple Mandra, the Sabi to Rejarabono, you just read the Annie Jude Harabono, defi process. A defi process, the round one, round two, round three, round four, she ever know. Round four are now so generally. Last year, yes, at meeting, my group presented a lot of it. And although the voting model, never you be able to do it, never you be able to do it, but 86% of the people that metabolic dysfunction would highlight a lot of it, and the metabolic dysfunction part, that means the way to look at the clinical entity in it, that clear up to them, you know, you know, you know, metabolic, you don't have to do it, you know, 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 Bomjara Lule Shirevono. I mean, ninety five per cent of the steroid hepatitis one, I go and Nashka or the prognostic implication in the Shine Ovevono. Ninety three per cent of Nash should be remain an important classifier of disease activity. 
ဒါတို့ရဲ့ဒီဘောင်းပရောဆက်ချိန်မှာဒါဖက်စ်ဘောင်းမှာဒါနောက်တိုင်းဖော်သနိမ်းချိန်ဘောနော်ရောင်း
ແລະກໍວ່າຄອນຊັມຊິລາບໍ່ນະຊິເອຊູນະດາແມນອີລະດີບໍ່ດີກະເລີຍກໍຄອນຊັມຊິມຊິຢູ່ໂຊລູຊ
ลวยกยันลวยกูอองตวาอองลวยไหนเนี่ยอ่าวิสาทาโลดาวคุณหนอบาโลโอ้เจ้าเนาะเดอมีเสียดาวดาเจ้าเนาะเตเบดาวสุ
ตัวก็รอไซโตกราดิงก็รออะแมนอดีซัลเสียเอ่อดีสเกลเตนก็นี่ไปแล้วจนเราซัลเทคนิคเนี่ยถั่วละแล้วเราเมนลี่อ่
elimination uh, of the hepatitis B from our liver. So in the blood, uh, hepatitis B infection will be cured by uh, antiviral drugs, but in the liver, the hepatitis B will be attacked by our body defense system. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We are today. We are very fortunate to have Professor Tana Tun from Mandalay with us. She came all the way from Mandalay during these difficult times. She took the flight. I I suppose arrived this evening and. Uh, what everybody wants to know, we know that you have presented Milan criteria, the metro ticket analogy and everything. But in general, when you face a patient in real world situation, how would you, I mean, uh, in MIMA's uh, clinical scenario, how would you decide or suggest or propose the liver transplantation to a case of a uh, ACC, which are contraindicated, which are indicated. So your father should be transplanted or whatever. So how are you dealing with the ACC patients regarding the liver transplantation? Thank you, Siai. In clinical practice, Mara, we follow the, the regarding the staging system, we follow the uh, BCLC stage. Or BCLC, particularly like the solution, you, know, you follow the European Pemes, we know that BCLC, or Milan, or Barwada, European guideline, they must do it. ESLD, Padme solution, or Dariakma, Moro, or Barupi, Madaria, New York, Malok, Tari, Hari, through Boma Muti, Biko, we have a follower, Jamarwara. I was trained like well, the Dimale, Kole, trained look, Takera, or BCLC stage in Moma Mudi, Bijamaru, Dahua, look, Bare, BCL stage A, B, C, D, Bono, Ra, Bima, Pau, Jamaru, Mirenji, Le Solution, Dara, Juma, Morphology, Yaro, the BCLC stage guy, size, Palauci, De Pare, Bono, Nadua, Jaro, Liver, yes, synthetic fashion, you, Gideco, Liver, yes, synthetic fashion, a total decomposed, decomposed, Pete Harine. Uh, ACC PP solution or Daria Jamaru at a limited setting Maro uh I Lolo Miyawu Papilus or Darigon BC stage DM Apagarapo no now the gallo early diagnosis to Marnil and Yer and Pia Pia Lare Pia Lae Koa Colo Clin Piaris Rada say OBD Mave Pipi Clinic Mave Pila Lose Jamaro Cirrosis to Amir and Demonita Low Lare follow up low lar early diagnosis yare so you know that it depends on patient ye uh, uh, curative management will be hard one in the label. No resection, look there solution at our resection tomorrow. See, Maro or in the signing of Warwati Maro Malone. I'm da who are low in a row tomorrow. Interact evidence of the board of hypertension with Maro play like community at that OGD. It's a for a bomb. My team is a good candidate for the early diagnosis. Yeah, I know that it go no one tomorrow. Certainly, you need counterpart go on where Mari or transplant solution. I wrote tomorrow that I'll let go no more. Let's hear up on transplant. Not a quarter of local regional therapy, but local regional therapy patient compensated uh, the liver synthetic fashion as she did until the child be long. My way she did tomorrow. I am counterpart Kali Long and is what RFE and a day school or you are a now so no tomorrow. Now, um, vein thrombus, malignant thrombus is she now be limited to extra hepatic spread is she line or tomorrow daria tk i net now if the patient is affordable to proceed so immunotherapy which we buy uh this line of men met acc management my basically are or tomorrow the follow look our pclc my popular so we have the the tomorrow learn look like it huh now to easily let barry not to more burden at rene not a quarter liver yes in the defense in the only the mark account look they had our tomorrow time we have radically located by Thank you very much. Sami Oshan. Dima Meta, systemic therapy should be considered after how many times TAC failure? Tenotene solo genaro, TAC, Benajin Lolo, failure, Lutama, Piro, Peroma, systemic therapy, Samle, Sura Mira. Thank you, Sayo. Diga, I don't know the power, my papa. TAC reflections or TAC failure is defined as the more than two constituted TAC 
ပြစ်မှုမရှိဘူးဆိုရင်တော့ဒါတီစီဖွေရတာတို့တမက်ပါတယ်အကေးကျူမာကဒီကုန်ပြီးပြစ်မှုမရောက်ပါးရှဲ
this is the biggest crowd ever I have seen since after since the uh, COVID time has since our real meeting has started. And uh, congratulations! And in future, also please at least one or two times a year, please support the academic activities of our Haptology Society. And also, I would like to congratulate Professor Wawensi. Professor Wawensi is coming here and speaking or presenting, not in her capacity, in the consultant and professor from the YSH. She is representing in her capacity as the president of the liver section, Mima and Liver Society. For that, uh, should we give a big hand to Professor Wawensi? And uh, also another thing that I would like to point out is, have you er clearly, uh, have you carefully looked at the title slide of the Dr. Mayon Shan? He's now become head of department of gastroenterology and hepatology. Professor Mayon Shan, thank you very much and uh, for your presentation and we would like to congratulate you as well. And last but not the least, Professor Tanatun, uh, you since you became the professor, we haven't yet. Our society has not yet congratulated. And congratulations for coming all the way to Yango and participate in our activities. And please, may I request in future as well, please continue your participation in our society, Professor Tanatun. Uh, with this, I'm sorry, you must have a lot of questions, burning questions, but for tonight, I suddenly I have to dis announce that the Q&A session is over. And again, thank you very much, Isai. And I would like to hand over the floor back to the Masao ceremony. Thank you very much. We are now reaching the uh, end of our program for today. I will not be, this is my closing speech. I've finished and now I'm back to you. Okay.